everyone, it is Lucy and today we're going to be trying some award-winning K-beauty. I have been a fan of Korean makeup for a very long time. I would say a significant percentage of the makeup that I own is Korean makeup. Definitely some of my favorite products are K-beauty. And semi-recently, the Glow Pick 2022 awards came out. I do just want to read this out from Odile Monodist. She has a blog called The Monodist. I'll put a little screenshot here and credit her. But she's an amazing creator who works within the Korean beauty industry. So she kind of has a lot of insight into it that I personally do not have. But she says on Glowpick that Glowpick was the first platform in Korea focused on honest consumer beauty reviews. So they developed a unique algorithm that ensures only credible and verified reviews are taken into account. So I was looking through the winners of the year's award and I realized that I actually owned quite a few of them. Some products I'm very familiar with and have been testing and trying for a while so I can give you like little mini reviews and some that I'm not as familiar with. Either way, I thought it could be kind of a fun, chatty, chill time and let's jump into it. Having a little look-see at the table next to me, I'm pretty sure like all of the products I'm gonna be using in today's video are available via YesStyle, which if you don't know, YesStyle is a really great place to shop for K-beauty in particular. It's what I shop for from them the most often, but they also have clothing, homeware, they got a bunch of stuff. And I have purchased a lot of these myself, but also full transparency, I do get given credit from YesStyle to make videos with as well. I will pop all of the links to the products in the description box below. And if you shop through those links, you can save a little bit of cash oil, a little bit of moolah. Anyway, let's jump right into it. And I've done, you know, a little bit of cheeky skincare and let's just start with the base. Just thought I'd zoom you in a bit. So we're nice and cute and close. Feeling nice and cozy. So Glowpick don't just have a winner for like best overall foundation product. They break it down into different categories. So matte foundation, glow foundation, matte cushion foundation, glow cushion foundation, stick foundation, packed foundation, and powder foundation. Which I think makes sense because we all have different preferences and I don't think it's really fair to like put like dewier, glowier kind of foundations up against more matte ones. And in each of the categories, they have a first, second and third place winner. I didn't have any of the winners in like first place for any of these foundations. Although my personal favorite foundation for like dewy, glowy, Aphrodite goddess kind of skin, the Hera Glow Lasting Foundation did come third in the glow foundation category. But I wanted to try, you know, one of the winners in one of the categories. And when I saw the Hera Black Cushion Foundation won the matte cushion foundation category and actually placed above the Laneige Neo Cushion Matte, which I've heard amazing things about. I was like, I have to try this one. I have been curious about this cushion foundation for the longest time. So I wanted to get it and try it and test it and just like see what it's like because I'm sure if many of you are K-pop fans as well, you will be familiar with Hera because I believe Hera's black line is the one that Jenny from Blackpink was like the promotional model for. So this isn't a new product. It's been around for a while. And for me to see that it was still being consistently ranked number one above like newer products that had been receiving a lot of buzz in the category, I was like, okay. I got mine in the shade 13 and one, which I believe is the, fairest or maybe second fairest neutral shade. So I hope it'll be an okay match, but we, we shall see. Okay. That coverage is <laughs> quite full on. So unlike a lot of cushion foundations, which can be very like dewy and glowy, this is meant to be a little bit more on the matte side. And as you can kind of see, it's also quite popular for having really good coverage. Why am I giving Harvey Dent like Too Faced right now? <laughs> wow, that coverage is really intense. Let me even this out on the other side. I tried to go in with a slightly lighter hand on this side, but as you can see, it is still pretty, um, it's pretty full on. This side, I think I went in a little too heavy on my initial application because I'm seeing it kind of like sit in my pores and get a little like cakey. And normally what I would do is try and get some of the excess product off with the sponge, but I feel like the sponge is particularly like dense. So it's not really like soaking up a lot of product, which is a good thing, but I do kind of want just, just a little bit of product to be soaked up. So I'm just gonna grab a wet sponge and gonna go over this a little bit. And it's like barely picking up any product when I'm like dabbing on my face. So I feel like it's pretty much like set down. Basically, if you have an oilier skin type and you are looking for something with some significant coverage, I would say this is a definite recommend for you. I do tend to prefer more like natural satin dewy formulas. So this is more of like a preference thing, but this is a formula that like once you put it down and you kind of like 
go to the other side or something like that. It kind of like self sets. So there's not a lot of play time in terms of like blending it and stuff. So really just like do a small area at a time. I will have to try this again with that in mind, but I see why people like it because this kind of formula where it like self sets down really quickly it tends to have very good like wear time and up close I feel like it sort of looks like a teeny little bit cakey but like no one's really looking at you like this close everyone looks at you like from this far away and from this far away it looks pretty pretty good so we shall see so I'm gonna just continue in the order that I like to do my makeup which may result in me looking a little bit unhinged for a little bit longer but Say la vie. Next up, I like to do my brows and I prefer to use pencils. And I had two of the top three brow pencils, which are the Peri Pera Speedy Skinny Brow and the Ramond Han All Flat Brow. So I have used both of these quite a bit. So I'll just give you like little mini reviews and my thoughts on both of them. But basically Peri Pera Speedy Skinny Brow, it is what it says it is. It's a very skinny brow pencil. So it's really great if you want to kind of draw small lines. I will say this is quite pigmented, which is great, but you just might need to be careful with like how light of a hand you use with this, depending on what vibe you go for for your brows. But I personally like to do like like little feathery strokes and sometimes this can get like a little intense looking but it has a spoolie on the other end which you can kind of use to brush the product out so this was the second place one but I actually prefer the third place one which was the Ramond Han All Flat Brow but this one is more like that kind of slim trapezoid triangle shape it looks like a little bit softer a bit more of a natural look but it's just not quite as precise as this one I also have my brows laminated at the moment so I tend not to really do too too much of them but I'm going to use the Ramond one just to kind of fill in some of the like sparser areas of my brow and then if you feel like there's sort of like hair gaps missing, you can use the peri -peri one to kind of draw the individual hairs. So this is the side with both of them. You can kind of see the Ramond one adds this like almost like brow powdery, like soft element to it compared to this side, which is just the peri -pera. The color is also like a touch too dark and a touch too like gray for my natural brow color. But the C2 Grace Taupe from Ramond is like the perfect cool toned medium brown shade for my brows. And there are the brows. I love Korean brow products in particular because a lot of them are very affordable and I think the shades are really nice. So these are two of the three bestsellers. The Roman ones are my favorite, but I do like the Peri Peri one as well and it is super affordable. Now, moving on to eyeshadow. When I was initially looking through the eyeshadow category on Glowpick, I was like, oh, I don't have any of like the winning eyeshadows. That's sad. But they have a category in the awards called Trend, which is basically like looking back at the year and like what the trends were in makeup and the products that kind of exemplify that trend. And they felt that the product that best exemplified this trend was the Peri Peri All Take Mood Palette. And this eyeshadow palette is like truly a bestseller. They initially came out with like a few shades, but they continually like added more. I don't know how many they have now, but like a bunch. But I've had mine for a hot second now and you can kind of see cause it's like a little <laughs> used, which is good. That's how we want our makeup products to look. I have the one that's called Muteful Rose, which as you can see are these quite muted, neutral, dusty, mauvey, rosy shades. I have to say, I haven't really been wearing this palette in particular a lot recently because I got it quite a while ago and I've been playing with some newer things. But when I got it, I was like obsessed with it. It was like the only thing I wore for like months. It is such an easy, like no fuss palette. All of these shades work together so well. That is like two shades from the palette. Let me pop some of the shimmer on because it is very pretty. It's not overly intense. It's not like blinding. It's just like, soft, diffused, pretty. I do think it looks really weird still without all the other colors on my face, but like in terms of an easy, quick eyeshadow look, I, these palettes are just really, really great for that. Like I have tried basically every combo you can do in this palette. I won't say they all turn out looking spectacularly different because they are all like very harmonious shades, but they do always look good. According to the Glowpick app, these are popular for having a like really portable, size, which I will agree by the way, because I have taken this traveling multiple times and it's like kind of the only thing I really need. May not have won the eyeshadow palette category, but it's been a very popular bestseller and I wouldn't doubt that it's won some other awards. All right, next up eyeliner. And I was very excited to see that the winner for the eye pencil category 
was this eyeliner from Clio that I have been using for quite a hot minute. It is the Sharp So Simple Waterproof Pencil Eyeliner. I have mine in the shade 02 Brown and it is like a gel pencil. And I personally love this liner because it is so soft and easy to use. You know those eye pencils where you have to like kind of like stab it kind of in your eye to get the, no, not here. It just puts down like the perfect amount of pigment. Like that was literally so easy. Also not to do with it being an award winner, but I love taking it and just kind of doing like little dots almost on the lower lash line. I just find it creates like a nice little bit of emphasis without kind of dragging the eye down for me anyway. I feel like within K-Beauty, Clearer has one of the best reputation when it comes to eyeliners and it's for a good reason. Because even though this is like a pencil or gel eyeliner, this lasts so long. Like I can like rub at that a bit and it's not, it's not coming off. And I would definitely recommend this one to beginners or anyone who struggles with eyeliner, give this one a shot. And you may have guessed because I curled my lashes, but the next category is mascara. And this is a category where I did not have any of the winning products or even like runner up products or anything. <laughs> and I have to say, maybe controversial, I haven't had the best luck with Korean mascaras. I have had like medium luck in that I've tried a few that I thought were like, good, but nothing that I would like really repurchase. And I've tried a few that I didn't really like. So I decided to pick up the winner in the long lashes mascara category, which is this from Clio, the Kill Lash Super Proof Mascara in the curling formula. And this mascara has been described as giving a lash extension like effect and a flexible hold that keeps curled lashes for a long time. So we shall see, this is the first time I'm using it. I won't be too harsh on it either way because I kind of feel like you need to have your mascara open for a hot minute to like, you know, really see how you feel about it. First of all, I love the brush. It's really uh, getting in there. It's quite skinny. It's like not overly thick and bristly, which is nice because I can like really get up in there. I will also say, you know, sometimes when you open a new mascara and it immediately has that very like wet feeling to it that like you kind of feel like you're not gonna tell what the formula's like until like a week after. This doesn't feel so wet to me as almost like moussey. I feel like I'm seeing some little like fibers on the brush. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a fiber mascara. You can see by like, look how long that just one lash is. I personally really enjoy a fiber mascara. And one of my main things is I don't like it when my lashes feel like crunchy. I realize this may not be a thing for everyone, but I just need my lashes to feel like lashy and have a bit of that like flexible like softness to them and obviously there's a significant coat of mascara on them so they're not going to feel like super soft but i'm not getting that crispy crunch that i so hate so that is good i'm kind of living for this eye makeup not gonna lie and i'm gonna add one more little delicious bit because i actually owned the number one liquid eyeshadow from the Glowpick Awards, which is this one from 3CE. It is the eye switch, and I specifically have the one in double note, which I personally think is the best one. I have had this eye glitter for way too long. Do not inform the authorities, because I think they would make me get rid of it. But listen, my personal rule is if it smells fine, if it looks fine, if it feels fine, it probably is fine. But it just comes with this tiny little like silicon brush, and I'm just gonna dot it under my eye. See, it's just this tiny little, Oh, it's so pretty. It's just like this beautiful, like multi-dimensional, iridescent, glittery, like this is the like ending fairy K-pop idol glitter, okay? 3C have been selling this glitter for yonks now. Like I wanna say at least like five, maybe six years at least. And it still reigns supreme. It still won this award. There have been so many new eye glitters coming out, but everyone seems to agree the general consensus of the populace is this is the best one. Onto contouring and shading, and let's just use this little mirror that I've been using kind of throughout this video. This is the Too Cool For School Art Class by Rodan Contour Powder. As you can see, there are three different shades in this palette. This is actually the newer shade they've released. It's more kind of cool toned, ashy toned, but the original is a little bit warmer, has a little bit more redness to it. I did actually use that one previously and I really liked the formula, but I knew the shade was just slightly off for me. So now that they've come out with this one, I'm very keen, very excited. I don't do a heap of contouring. I kind of just do it like here. <laughs> 
And that's without me blending it in, which I will do in a moment, but just to show you like the shade unblended. But the result is it looks like a very natural kind of shadow. But what I enjoy about a lot of the top products that we have seen so far is that they're just very easy to use. They're very user friendly. Like I'm obviously doing this on camera, so it takes like a little bit longer because I'm trying to like line up shots and stuff, but that is a very no fuss contour powder. Like it's not overly pigmented, so you're not like spending heaps of time blending it out. It's really nice and buildable. I've been using that one if you include me using like the old shade as well. I've been using that for a few years now. I really like it. Now onto blush. And I did actually have multiple of the winners, but I accidentally gave them away before I filmed this video because I don't wear them. And you might be like, Lucy, question mark, question mark. And yeah, I realized recently when I was doing my makeup declutter, which I filmed, so you can check that out. It's on my channel. But a lot of my blushes were really quite warm toned, which I kind of like didn't realize until I like looked at them all together and swatched them. <laughs> so of the three powder, blushes. I had the Clinique Cheek Pop, which was in a very bright orangey coral shade, which is absolutely stunning, but I realized not one that really worked for me. And I also had two of the 3CE Mood Recipe Face Blushes. And one of them I actually hit pan on because I like the formula so much. So I love the 3CE formula, but after dyeing my hair back to a natural shade, and maybe you can relate if you had, you know, pink or colored hair like I did. There were a lot of times where I would like put a color of like makeup or clothing on and I would be like, oh, this just doesn't work for me because of the color of my hair right now. Or like, oh, my hair's fading a little bit like more warm toned at the moment and that's why this doesn't work and that can be true to an extent but now that my hair is back within the realm of like my hair's natural color if shades like don't look quite right on me I'm like, oh, well, they just don't look quite right on me like as I am in my natural state. So probably wasn't the fact that I had pink hair with blue bangs, was it? If that makes sense. Like it just didn't work with my skin tone, but like other factors made me think it could be something else but it was just the fact that it didn't suit me. <laughs> so I don't have either of those. And you'll notice that in the top three, only one of them is a K-beauty product. The other two are just Western products. And um, I happen to have the number two one. NARS blushes, I feel like have definitely had their kind of place in the sun. They have some very popular shades, you know, the ones. I've also seen NARS blushes talked about in like Korean makeup videos by like Korean beauty YouTubers. And they typically talk about like the uniqueness of the shades and things like that. I don't have the most famous shade here with me today, but I do have the shade uh, Deep Throat, which is a little bit more of like a dusty kind of rose shade. It's a little bit less peachy, but I would describe it as a little bit more of like a rosy tone rather than like a super peachy kind of flush. I don't wear this one as much as I used to. I prefer, again, I hate to sound like a broken record, a little bit more of like a cool toned like berry rather than like a super rosy kind of warm one. But I do think this is a very pretty like natural blush color. And in general, I do like the finish that the NARS blushes have of this kind of like soft natural sheen. It is, it is pretty pretty. And now onto highlighter, apologize, I'm a little bit of a flop. I only have the third place winner. Bow bow. The top two were the Clio Prism Highlighter, which has been popular for quite a few years now. I wasn't able to get my hands on it in time, but you can get it on YesStyle. And the second place was from this brand called Glint, which I think so far only really do like highlightery products. It's very interesting. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I, I wish to investigate. And then the third place is the Romand See-Through Veil Highlighter. There are quite a few Romand products in the winning categories and for very good reason. Romand are firmly within some of my favorite K-beauty brands of all time. Like they just have so many bangers. And this highlighter is no exception. It has this really like soft glow. You know, it's not immediately as like blinding as some you might see. They have two shades, one that's a bit more of your classic champagne and this one, which is like a soft, like reflective pink. Come on, Gromit. Like, I'm sorry, how pretty is that? Hello? Uh, it's so pretty. So this blush is in the top category because it has a natural radiance that shines softly without looking like fake or metallic or glittery. But even see like looking face on, it doesn't look like I have a strip of like a metallic highlighter. But if I turn the cheek, it's like, oh, it's just like a little whisper of angel fairy kisses. It's really pretty. Mm, the way it glistens, delectable. And then last but certainly not least, we have to apply some lip color. I have several <laughs> from the winning categories because I'm a lip color fiend. And I also have taste that results in the ones that I picked being winners. 
ding ding. I feel like now I'm just doing like my own awards of these. But anyway, all of these are in like winning categories. This one was a runner up. It's the Hera Central Spicy Tint. But I would describe it as like a plumping tinted gloss that's quite sticky but in like a good way and that it like kind of like coats your lips with like a syrupy sticky mm, the way I'm describing this doesn't sound good this is good if you want like a natural like juicy dewy lip thing where you want your lips to look like super plump but it's a little bit pricey and I like these better these are all Remand lip products and all of these came first place within the respective categories. I'm just going to show you what this gloss looks like on its own without any tint underneath it because I need you to see and I can also like then remove this because it's quite like a watery gloss. This is the Glasting Water Gloss. It won for lip gloss and you just you need to see it. This is without a doubt the most stunning lip gloss. I wish I had slightly better lasting power but in terms of looks unbeatable. Watch just look. Look at that. That's like an anime level of shine. You know when you used to download like mods for The Sims 3 and give them like all the yassified lip gloss and stuff? That's what this looks like. We have like the anime shine, like persistent. Look at that. Only downfall with this is I think you can apply a little bit too much and then you kind of like get it in your mouth, but I will say it's like pleasantly minty. So it's kind of a good little snack, but it's not meant to be a snack, but it's like so liquidy and almost like a little bit oily, but it's not like sticky or oily. It's just the best. It's the best. Literally tragic to wipe that off. But now I want to show you the Dewy Full Water Tint. It's this one here. Look how pretty. This compared to the Lasting Tint, which I'll show you in a sec, is a little bit more watery. It kind of sinks more into the lips rather than like floating on top like a jelly. But this is the color Murmur Pink, so it's meant to be a little bit milky. But that is like a gorgeous, like soft Barbie pink. Hello. And you can see even from me having it on for like a brief second, it left quite a pretty stain. And all of their Remand lip products, I will say the best thing about them is the way they wear away. Even if as you're eating, drinking, talking, living your life, they kind of come off, they always look pretty in whatever state they're in. They're really fuss free. And the best one, in my opinion, and the best seller for a reason is the Juicy Lasting Tint. This is in the shade Bare Fig, which I think will work with this look quite well. And sometimes when you put them on, they can be a little pigmented. A lot of colors look kind of pigmented on me because I'm just like ghosty vibes. So I tend to kind of like blot them out a little bit just to diffuse them so they're not so like full on. But this finish is so gorgeous. It's like softly dewy and it kind of like plumps out the lips just the tiniest bit, but it looks really even and soft and diffused. And I will say the best thing about the Romand lip products is the shade selection. Just such a beautiful selection and variety of shades that just there's something for everyone. This is now a Romand Stan channel. It is what it is. I take it with pride. So there is the final look. What do we think? It's not really very different to my everyday normal makeup that you might see me filming with because I use a lot of these products already. I'm definitely enjoying how the foundation has settled on my skin. The initial application was looking a little uncanny valley and I wasn't sure about it, but as it's kind of like melted into the heat of my visage, I think it looks a lot better. And this is it without any powder. And I actually think like the unpowdered version of this looks really good. I mean, it was definitely like a self-setting formula with the way it like, you know, kind of stuck after I popped it on. But now seeing it with like the whole face on, I get it. I kind of get it. It's pretty, it looks pretty good. Probably not like a day to day one for me because it was a little bit fiddly to apply. But if you want that full coverage glam vibe, it's um, it's there. So that was me just running my mouth about K-beauty and Korean makeup products. I would love to hear if you're into K-beauty, if you use Korean makeup, what your favorite product is. Because even though I have all these products I love, I'm always open to trying new things. Like if someone tells me like, this is the best eyeliner you've ever used, say no more. The vibes in my dreary rental bedroom are very good right now. A reminder that I will put all the information about all the things in the description box below. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.